Why would you want to use the bank to finance your rental property when you have the possibility of having the seller of the property finance it for you? If our sellers are willing to finance a portion of our properties, then we may not need as much of the bank's money, or in some cases, we may not need the bank at all. You can make a creative deal with sellers that brings benefits to both them and you. This video will break down how seller financing works. Stick around until the end of the video where I'll walk you through a deal where the seller financed the entire purchase of their rental property. Hey, what's up? It's Darren Voros here. My mission is to help you reduce your real estate investing education time from months to minutes. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. First off, you'll hear a few names used to refer to this process. Seller financing, vendor takebacks, or VTBs. A VTB is when a seller of a property lends money to a potential buyer to assist them in buying that property that they have for sale. Depending on your strategy and the type of properties you'll be aiming to buy, there are different ways to when and how to introduce this idea of financing. This leads me to step number one, understand when to introduce a vendor take back. Some investors lead with the question of a VTB, while others will introduce it as a way to get a deal done. There are benefits and drawbacks to both. The benefit of leading with the vendor take back is that if you are low on cash and it's the only way you can get the deal done, then you'll find out right away whether this is a transaction that you can potentially make happen. But most most sellers and most real estate agents are not familiar with vendor takebacks and you risk the chance of losing a deal before it even has a chance to really get started. At the same time, at least you're not wasting valuable time and resources on a deal that won't work for you. As an alternative, introducing it later on in the transaction can be great if you're at a point where you can't come to an agreement with the seller. Usually this is done when the seller wants more money and the buyer wants to pay less. Introducing a vendor takeback as a way to get the deal done at the appropriate time can yield better results. But to my earlier point, if you've spent all of this time and energy negotiating back and forth, and the only way the deal works is with a vendor take back and the seller is not willing to do one, you may have wasted time on this transaction. Real estate transactions can be emotional for some. For a lot of people, their property is their baby. So it's important to be cautious and approach sellers in a likable manner in order to gain their trust and respect. On the other hand, logic and reason are significant factors here as well. You wanna be likable, trustworthy, but not a pushover. Over. You may find that asking questions and digging deeper into the details of a sale can benefit you in the long run and the seller. So step two, do your discovery. This is where you find out about all of the seller's needs. You first need to see if it's even possible for the seller to do a VTB. Some of the main questions to ask when approaching a seller are, why do they want to sell? How much debt is on the property? What is the seller going to do with the money? And are they open to doing a creative deal or have they done one in the past? Asking questions like this will give you great insight to whether a vendor take back is even possible. For instance, if they need every dollar of their sale to buy another property, there's not going to be a vendor take back in that kind of situation. If there's a large mortgage outstanding on the property, there won't be any room for a vendor take back. If they've never done a VTB, it may be challenging to explain the benefits of this strategy. This is why it's essential to understand where the seller is and it's essential you build rapport between you and them so you can present your vendor take back deal. There's also one more person who may need convincing which leads me to the next point. Step three, get the agent on board. Ideally, you're dealing directly with the seller so that you can build rapport, they can understand the benefits of a VTB, and you can create that personal relationship. But if there are real estate agents involved, the agents have to be on board, otherwise they'll likely kill the deal. A real estate agent's number one priority is to get paid on a transaction. So if they believe there's a possibility of them getting less pay or not being paid at all, they will advise their clients against a vendor take back on both the buying and the selling side. Suppose you're simply communicating your discovery questions to the agent. In this case, he or she may not be able to properly understand or relay that message to the seller in a way that explains all the benefits to them. My pro tip here is to try and get all parties involved on some kind of conference call or video conference. That way, your agent and the other agent and the seller are all on the same page and you get to explain why a vendor take back is beneficial to everyone involved in the transaction. It's also vital to sell your skills of doing successful VTBs in the past, so the seller and the agent are confident you can pull this off. Which leads to step number four, create win-win scenarios. All parties involved will want to hear what you have to say about the upside of the deal. The benefits to the seller could include 
having the opportunity to sell the property at a higher price, deferring capital gains or income taxes, the potential to earn a higher rate of return on their money than a traditional investing vehicle, and they're familiar with the property. So in the event of a default, they're comfortable taking back the property they once owned. The benefits to you should be relayed to the seller so that they still seem like benefits to them. In most VTB cases, there will be some kind of renovation performed on the property to increase the value. So convincing a seller that you're going to improve the property at your expense is is beneficial should the property end up back in their control. Another advantage is that with less of your own money in a potential deal, you may have the ability to expedite the renovation process to pay them back quicker. And in some cases, the interest you are paying the seller could provide them with a passive income source without having to manage tenants or the property. Capturing their attention with these benefits may work in both of your favors, especially if they believe in your ability to execute and can see the future upside to everyone, which leads to step number five. Know your exit strategy. What's your plan? Will you lift the value of the building you're buying and pay back the seller through a refinance of the property? Or will you raise the value of the building through a renovation and then sell it? In some cases, a vendor take back is simply a deferred payment plan. For instance, we purchased a property in Costa Rica and we spaced out the payments on the property in four equal installments. Now, this is not rent to own. We own the property right away. We just make the payments over a year. What you plan to do with the property will inform your structure of the vendor take back. If you need cash in your pocket, you may want to do a lump sum interest payment at the end. If your building has cash flow that can cover a monthly interest payment to the seller, you could structure it in that way and know what your fallback plan is if something doesn't go well. The seller will be interested to know your plan if things don't work out exactly as you expect. So make sure to have multiple exit strategies and communicate that very clearly with your seller to get them on board with the vendor take back. As promised, I wanted to walk you through a deal that my good friend Alfonso Cuadra did recently where he was able to get a 36 unit building with a 90% VTB on the property. Notice when and how Alfonso introduced the VTB. To recap, the property had been on the market for a while. Comparables in the area were around $40,000 per unit. So for his 36 units, that would be roughly $1.4 million. So he knows the end lift value. This is his exit strategy. The seller set the price at around $900,000. Alfonso went in and negotiated a conservative deal based on factors such as location, cap rates, etc. for around $780,000. But there was still no VTB introduced yet. Now the seller had previously rejected higher offers than this, but because Alfonso was careful in the way he approached the seller, how he built rapport with them, and his track record for completing transactions like this, he was able to get the property under contract at a discount. When Alfonso finally went out and viewed the property during inspections, he discovered some significant deferred maintenance costs and some structural issues with estimated repair values at $80,000 to $120,000. That's when Alfonso came back with a lower offer of $675,000, and this is when he introduced the VTB as a way to get this deal done. With a VTB, Alfonso could complete the repairs to the building, lift the value, and then pay out the seller. The seller would benefit from deferred taxes, which would help offset the lower purchase price. Remember, the other benefit here is that if anything went wrong and Alfonso defaulted, the property would simply go back to the seller. Pretty low risk deal for them. Alfonso structured the deal at a 90% VTB so the agents would get paid. He asked for interest-free payments for the first year to help with cash flow, and then after that, the seller would be getting 3.5% interest on their money, which to them was a benefit instead of riding the fluctuations in the market. They could count on this consistent return with their money. After the initial offer was met with a no from the selling agent, surprisingly, the seller eventually accepted. Alfonso created a win-win scenario for himself and the seller and introduced the VTB at the right time and with the right relationship with the seller to get the deal done. A perfect example of how this strategy can be used effectively. In today's overly heated market, it's, it sometimes takes creative strategies, things that are different, or it may take exceptional negotiating to get the deal you want at the end of the day. If you'd like to learn more about vendor takebacks and creative deals, you can check out my free masterclass webinar on my website at darrenvoros.com. If you have questions about real estate investing, leave those in the comment section below. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.